But I want to do a little history lesson, bring it to present day, and apply it to current events, because this affects you, each and every one of you. This is the document that Bernie Sanders and Biden and their reprobates put together about how they want to govern America. I call it the New Communist Manifesto. When you go through this document, you'll see what I mean. In every aspect of our culture, our politics, our government, central government controls you, controls our livelihoods, controls our future. It's the modern day communist manifesto, and this is what Biden and his administration are using, and the Democrat Party. I told you before, spent last weekend on it, this is an autocratic party. It's not a normal American party that supports our principles, our constitution, and our processes. It's an alien entity. Much of their ideology is imported from Germany. Even these fools don't know it, but it is. Now, I want to get to this issue of property. And this affects you. What's going on today in Washington, D.C., and what's going on today in New York. The Democrat Party has a pretend justice system, a Potemkin justice system in New York. Well, they have courtrooms, they have judges, they have prosecutors, sometimes they have juries, but it's rigged. It's rigged against Donald Trump and anybody who dares to challenge the status quo and the ruling class in the left in New York. And he's paying a severe price for it. They want to steal all his property. They want to steal his buildings right from under them. They are chortling about it. Their damnable media is chortling about it as a right to appeal. And they want to do it quickly because if they steal all his properties and they sell it to somebody else, pennies on the dollar, even if he wins on appeal, even if he wins under the Eighth Amendment, the Bill of Rights of the Constitution and the Supreme Court, he's lost his property. And they used a law that was never intended to be used this way. They have a judge who's a complete fraud. They have a prosecutor who should have been disbarred based on how she ran for office. A radical Marxist kook. All Democrats. Now, what does this have to do with you? I'll tell you what it has to do with you while this is going on. Joe Biden and his regime have issued a regulation that will make the use of your car and the, combu the combustion engine an impossibility. In other words, they are destroying the automobile industry. They are destroying your vehicles, your choice of vehicles, for the future. Now, why are they doing that? I'll get to that in a minute. They're also doing another thing. This past week, they enshrined rules that will make it virtually impossible to build single-family homes in the suburbs and the experts. This has been a dream of theirs since Obama was president of the United States. So they want to control your vehicles. They want to control your homes. They want to control your neighborhood. They want more apartment buildings, condos, and townhouses. They want to eliminate single-family homes. They want to control zoning from the HUD, Housing and Urban Development Building in Washington, D.C., in every corner of the country. They want to lay out maps that will determine where your schools will be, where public transportation will be, where your libraries will be. And they will have to approve all these plans if you want any federal funding, any federal funding. So it's an industrial policy that is really a de-industrial policy. I want to read something to you before I go on. Private property, what is private property? You see how it's being destroyed all over the country in our cities. Stores have to close. People's cars are being stolen. The Democrat Party believes in confiscatory taxes, so you can't even afford to live a certain way, whether you have a home or a business. You constantly hear them using Marxist propaganda about the rich, you gotta get the rich, gotta get the rich, as if that's gonna help you. All it does is empower the government and the Democrat Party. You don't see a penny of it. It's aimed at you, ultimately. And so what is all this war on property? Your houses, your cars, your ceiling fans, uh, your electrical, your uh, your air conditioning systems, your dishwashers, your dryer. What is this obsession? It's everything. Listen to this from James Madison. March 29, 1792. What is property? Property. This term, in its particular application, means the dominion which one man claims and exercises over the external things of the world, in exclusion of every other individual. Okay, I have my my house. In its larger 
and juster meaning it embraces everything to which a man may attach a value and have a right, and which leaves to everyone else the like advantage. Property is bigger than this. It's this. Property in your person. Property in your beliefs. Property in your morals. And of course, material property. In the former sense, a man's land or merchandise or money is called his property. In the latter sense, a man has a property in his opinions and the free communication of them. He has a property of peculiar value in his religious opinions and in the profession and practice dictated by them. He has a property very dear to him in the safety and liberty of his person. He has an equal property in the free use of his faculties and free choice of the objects in which to employ them. In a word, as a man is said to have a right in his property, he may be equally said to have a property in his rights. Where an excess of power prevails, big government, property of no sort is duly respected. No man is safe in his opinions, his person, his faculties, or his possessions. Where there is an excess of liberty, mobocracy, pure democracy, the effect is the same, though from an opposite cause. Government is instituted to protect property of every sort, as well that which lies in the various rights of the individuals, as that which the term particularly expresses, this being the end of government, that alone is a just government, which impartially secures to every man whatever is his own. Right in your person, right in your faith, right in your property. According to this standard of merit, the praise of affording a just securing to property should be sparingly bestowed on a government, limited government, which, however, scrupulously guarding the possessions of individuals, does not protect them in the enjoyment and communication of their opinions. In other words, when it really comes to your human being, government really doesn't protect that. You protect that. Government becomes the problem, in which they have an equal and in the estimation of some, a more valuable property. The Democrat Party, the radical left ideology, the Marxist ideology, government is more important than any individual right, period. More sparingly, should this praise be allowed to a government where a man's religious rights are violated by penalties, or fettered by tests, or taxed by a hierarchy. Conscious is the most sacred of all property, conscious, morality. Other property depending in part on positive law, that is the exercise of that being a natural and unalienable right. Read the reporter for Politico, I think she was on MSNBC, said, what's all this natural unalienable right stuff? We got our rights from Congress and so forth. That is bizarre. To guard a man's house as his castle, to pay public and enforce private debts with the most exact faith, can give no title to invade a man's conscience, which is more sacred than his castle or to withhold from it that debt of protection for which the public faith is pledged by the very nature and original conditions of the social pact. Hey, government, you exist for one reason, to protect the individual and to make sure we as individuals live in a harmonious way. You don't get to steal our free will. You don't get to steal our soul. You don't get to dictate morality. We get that from a higher authority. And yet that's exactly what's happening in this country under Biden and the Democrats. That is not a just government nor is property secure under it, where the property which a man has in his personal safety and personal liberty is violated by arbitrary seizures of one class of citizens for the service of the rest. A magistrate issuing his warrants to a press gang would be in his proper functions in Turkey or Indostan under appellations proverbially of the most complete despotism. That is not a just government nor is property secure under it, where arbitrary restrictions, exemptions, and monopolies deny to part of its citizens that free use of their faculties and free choice of their occupations, which not only constitute their property in the general sense of the word, but the means of acquiring property, strictly so-called, the means of acquiring a home, a car, land. What must be the spirit of legislation, where a manufacturer of linen cloth is forbidden to bury his own child in a linen shroud, or in order to favor his neighbor who manufactures woolen cloth, where the manufacturer and the wearer of woolen cloth are again forbidden the economical use of buttons of that material in favor of the manufacturer of buttons of other material. In other words, the government shouldn't step in and ban or require and redistribute these rights, which is exactly what's happening. 
A just security to property is not afforded by thy government, under which unequal taxes oppress one species of property and reward another species, where arbitrary taxes invade the domestic sanctuaries of the rich, and excessive taxes grind the faces of the poor, where the keenness and competitions of want are deemed an insufficient spur to labor, and taxes are again applied by an unfeeling policy, government, as another spur in violation of that sacred property which heaven in decreeing man to earn his bread by the sweat of his brow, kindly reserved to him in small repose that could be spared from the supply of his necessities. It goes on slightly, but I want to get into this as it applies to us. Where in the hell does the government have the power under our Constitution to decide what kind of a vehicle you can or cannot drive? Where in the hell does the Constitution give Joe Biden the power to decide what kind of air conditioning unit you can have in your home? Where in the hell does the Constitution give the government the power to decide what kind of dishwasher, washing machine, dryer, toaster, light bulb you can have in your home? Well, it's climate change. I didn't ask that question. I didn't ask about the propaganda. I didn't ask about the ideology. Where is the government authorized to do that in the Constitution? Nowhere. Now, why are they focused on the automobile? What's their obsession? The automobile is mobility. It's your ability to get in a car and drive wherever you want, whenever you want. Well, electric vehicles don't work that way, do they? We have gas stations everywhere. They're in the infrastructure. The government didn't create them. The private sector created them. And they have one little business after another, an owner of a gas station. The system works beautifully. The government is destroying it. They insist that you use electric vehicles. Why, because of the air? Not because of the air. They're going to control the charging stations. Where they'll be, whether they exist, they're going to control your use because obviously the grid cannot handle all this power consumption. It's an impossibility. And so they're gonna control your movement, limited distances and uh, things of that sort. That's, the, that's what's going on here. How do I know that? Because the infrastructure is not in place and they don't care. It's not about clean air. It's about liberty, the property you have in yourself, mobility. The car was one of the greatest inventions in any free country because you can get in your car and go. They don't want you to get in your car and go. Home ownership, they're destroying it now. They want to in the suburbs. Single family home, a home with a white gate. Everybody has that dream wherever you are, wherever you live, this is something you want. They're trying to eliminate it. They want us to live in more and more dense areas where there's public transportation. We don't have freedom of mobility. They want to limit your ability to own land. Why? Your ability to acquire things outside of the government. That's why. And so public transportation, apartment buildings, you know what this sounds like? You ever see these pictures of the old Soviet Union under Lenin and Stalin? One massive apartment building after another. Or have you driven through New York, particularly in impoverished areas where they have public housing, one building after another after another? That's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. And why is that? It's much more easy to manage people who rely on you for permission, who are all located in one place. It's much easier to get a mob of people located in one place to do what you insist that they do. And this is all coming from the federal government, the war on gasoline, the war on fossil fuels, the war on single family homes, the war on local control of zoning. Where does the Constitution empower the Democrats to do this? No way. What do you think the founders of the country would think about this? Something tells me they would reject it. And you'll notice the language is always equity. Equity is the term that's been used by Marxists since the beginning of Marxism. Equity. They know that equality is an impossibility. We're all individual human beings. Property is the manifestation of your labor, your intellectual labor and your physical labor. There's two things you do most of your life until you die, sleep and work. They can't control the sleep, but they want to steal what you've created when you work. That is a form of indentured servitude to the state. Confiscatory taxes, telling you what you can and cannot buy, telling you whether you can own a home. The reason you get so excited when you own a home, finally I can own a home, or you have an automobile, it's one of the most expensive items you have. It's not just because they're beautiful because you feel free. I've accomplished something. This is mine and nobody can take it from me. 
Well, they're taking it from you right now. Equity. Equity is the word that they use. Equity is the word that Marx would use. It's a degrowth movement. They are deindustrializing our industries through industrial policies. They're taking out oil pipelines. They're taking out uh, commercial fisheries. They're taking out functioning automobiles and an, an, a complex automobile system. They're destroying energy independence, degrowth movement. And I can go on and on and on. That's what's happening. So circling back to Donald Trump, the Marxist and fascistic mentality, I understand their differences, but in the end it's the same. You lose your property and you lose your liberty is what's going on against Donald Trump. And it is horrendous. If they can do it to him, they can do it to anybody. And they are doing it to anybody. They're doing it to you. You're not gonna be able to own the automobile you want and travel as far as you want and be inconvenienced if you do. It'll be easy to track. You're not gonna be able to live in the home you want or the place you want because the government's gonna make those decisions. The government is regulating controlling everything through the back door, through unelected bureaucrats, through decisions made by potentates like Biden and their ilk. Biden says we're behind one million homes. Okay, let's build homes. No, 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 no. He wants a massive building program just like Stalin had to do what? To build massive skyscrapers to house people and so they can control people, and you will lose your freedom. That's the bottom line. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.